Today I'm going to show you how you can update an ArcGIS line hosted feature service using a feature class from a Geo database. In this example here, I have a parcels feature class coming from a local file Geo database, as you can see here. I have already uploaded that to ArcGIS Align as a hosted feature service. Now I want to go ahead and update that as my local copy in my file Geo database is updated. So I could manually go through the process of going to the sharing and then overwrite web layer, but as some of you probably have encountered, you will get a warning about doing so. So as I select to over, uh, overwrite my feature service, I will get prompted that all of the associated pop-ups and symbology may be lost during this. So to mitigate that issue, I'm going to do this is via Python script, which leverages the ArcGIS API for Python using a truncate and append method. So here is the Python script that I have. Uh, the area we're going to be focusing on is the variables here. This is the only area that you sh should have to update here with these variables. And I'll step through each one, one by one. So the first variable is asking for your username. This is your ArcGIS Online username, as I've specified here, my ArcGIS Online account. And another, the next variable is the password. So this will be your password for your ArcGIS Online account. The third variable is your feature class. So this is the feature class that you're using to update that hosted feature service. An easy way to get that path, if I jump to ArcGIS Pro, I can simply highlight my parcels layer here, my feature class. And here under the map tab, I have the option copy path. I can go ahead and very quickly choose that option and then I can go ahead and paste that path in here as you can see. The fourth variable I need is the feature service item ID. So I can actually grab that from the URL of my hosted feature service. So here in ArcGIS Align, I'm signed in. Here's the feature service I want to update. And within the URL, here's the add ID that I need. The fifth variable is asking whether this is a feature service or a hosted table. Essentially, if I'm updating a feature service, I want to specify this to true. If this was a hosted table that I'm updating, I would want to specify this as false, and then the next variable, hosted table, I'd set that to true here. In this scenario, I have a feature service, so I'm choosing true for the feature service variable and false for the hosted table variable. The next variable is the layer index. I can get that from the URL of my hosted feature service. So in ArcGIS Online, I can scroll down here to my URL and click View. And you can see that the layer index is zero here. But if there was another layer in here, say it was the second layer and that was index one, I would choose one for that variable. Or if this was different than zero, if I was using unique ID assignments when I publish the layer, that could be a different number like five where I went ahead and make sure that I'm getting that correct layer index value. So in this example, it's just a zero, so which I already specified here. The last variable is whether I want to disable sync. So if your feature service has sync enabled, you can choose the option to disable that. Specifying this to true will actually disable sync perform the truncate and append and then re-enable sync afterwards. Some consideration should be taken when setting this to true if you do have sync enabled. For example, if you do have people say, checking this data out to use in the field and offline editing, once you disable that sync, that offline editing would not be able to be synchronized back. So this should be done you know, outside of business hours and no one has that offline editing need requirement. Um, also, what this will actually do, this will not reset your object ID. So setting this to false, you can still run this tool, but what will happen is that it will continue to increment your object IDs. Uh, with true enabled, it will actually start it back over to its original uh, number value. So say it was you know, starting at 1, it's going to go ahead, and once you do the disablement, it will go ahead and start writing those values back at 1. When this is set to false, instead of doing a truncate, it will actually do a delete rows. And the delete rows will actually just continue to depend on to the object ID. And I've seen a lot of users question and run into issues where they're exceeding the maximum ID, uh, object ID value and the tool will fail for them. So this is new where we can actually disable that, perform the truncate and append, and then re-enable that. If you do not have sync enabled, what you want to do is set this, keep this as true here. Uh, in this example, I do have sync enabled. So if I jump up to my settings here, just to show you how this will work, I do have enable sync here. And I want to take a look at the data just to show you the object IDs. 
starting at one and going all the way up to my max, which is 42,111. So now that I have all my variables set and specified, I can go ahead and execute this tool and we'll see how that goes through and we'll update the hosted feature service. Okay, the script went ahead and completed in just a little over six minutes. I'll take a look at the data here. We can see that the object ID did not continue to increment after 42,000. It actually reset them and started back over at one, so I won't have to worry about the max object ID issue any further. So now that I have the Python script working correctly, I can go ahead and configure the Python script to run with Windows Task Scheduler if I want, where I can have the Task Scheduler kick off the script at a desired interval and keep my hosted feature service updated as frequent as need be. That's all I have for today. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to post them below.